Hello everyone, we start our lower limb um, series. We'll begin with the gluteal region. My name is Dr. Ominde. So um, the gluteal region, we'll start with the surface landmarks, the boundaries of the gluteal region, the major muscles and nerves, and osteology of the femur and the pelvis. So those are the things you expected to know. So these are the parts of the um, pubic bone, you know, the ilium, the pubis, the ischium, that's the anterior superior iliac spine, the anterior inferior iliac spines, the tubercles of the iliac crest, the ischial tuberosities at the back, the greater trochanter of the femur, you have a pubic tubercle here, and the pubic crest, and you have your pubic um, symphysis here, the midline joint between the two pubic bones. So we have an angle of inclination where the normal is 125 to 130 that's the um, angle between uh, the femur neck and the femur shaft so we have what we call coxa vara and coxa valga coxa vara is when the neck shaft angle is decreased so the angle of inclination is decreased and it occurs in the fractures of the neck of the femur and also when there's a slip um, femoral epiphysis. Coxa valga is when the angle is increased, especially in congenital dislocation of the hip. Then you need to know the surface landmarks of sciatic nerve, where you drew a line, okay, from um, ischial tuberosity to greater trochanter, and midway through that's where your sciatic nerve passes. Remember, it's infra piriformic. So what are the boundaries of the gluteal region? Superiorly, you have the iliac crest. Inferiorly, you have the fold of the buttocks. Okay, so the iliac crest, the fold of the buttocks. Then, medially, you have the nettle cleft between uh, borders of the sacrum and coccyx. And laterally, you have a line joining anterior superior iliac spine to the greater trochanter of the femur. So we have gluteus maximus, which is the largest muscle. This is gluteus maximus. So it's from the ilium, ischium, and, and coccyx, and it starts on gluteal tuberosity of the femur and the iliotibial tract. So what are the actions of gluteus maximus? Usually it extends the thigh and causes some lateral rotation and abduction of the hip. It's innervated by inferior gluteal nerve. Gluteus medius and minimus usually cause abduction, okay? abduction and medial rotation of the hip and they're innervated by superior gluteal nerve. So those are the differences. Inferior gluteal nerve for gluteus maximus and superior gluteal nerve and superior gluteal vessel supply gluteus medius, this one that has been cut, and gluteus minimus. What is lateral balance control? When you um, support the whole body on one limb and you raise the other limb, so if you're supporting your body with your left limb on the ground and the right limb is raised, all the weight is on one limb, but the pelvis does not tilt. That means that the gluteus medius and minimus on the limb that is supporting you, so in this case the left limb, they will contract and cause abduction of the pelvis and that prevents the pelvis from sagging on the unsupported side. So lateral balance control is control or rather prevention of sagging of the pelvis on the unsupported side by abduction of gluteus medius, by abduction of the pelvis by gluteus medius and minimus on the supporting limb, okay? And these are, lateral balance control is ensured when you have functioning gluteus medius and minimus, when their nerves are intact, superior gluteal nerves, superior gluteal vessels that supply them are intact, so the muscles are functioning well. When the hip joint is intact, the neck shaft angle of the femur is also intact. Those will ensure a good lateral balance control. So when you lose lateral balance control, you get a Trodenberg gait. So you do a Trodenberg test. When a patient comes, they will have a waddling gait or Trodenberg gait, and then you conduct a Trodenberg test. So when you tell them to stand on one limb and the pelvis tilts, you say the Trodenberg test is positive. But when they stand on one limb and the pelvis does not tilt, you say Trodenberg test is negative and the lateral balance control is good. So this is the posterior side of the pelvis, and we have what you call tensor fascia lata. Okay, so this is your tensor fascia lata. It originates from the iliac crest above here and anterior inferior iliac spine and inserts onto the iliotibial tract. So it causes flexion of the thigh, also abducts the thigh and causes medial rotation. 
like gluteus medius and minimus, it's innervated by superior gluteal nerve. So we have greater sciatic notch and lesser sciatic notch. They are completed to form foramina by um, sacrotuberous ligament and sacrospinous ligament. So you have greater sciatic foramen and lesser sciatic, a greater sciatic foramen and lesser sciatic foramen. So this is your greater sciatic notch, lesser sciatic notch. So this is your greater sciatic foramen. This is your piriformis muscle from the anterior aspect of middle three sacral portions to the tip of the greater trochanter. So that's a suprapiriformic compartment and infrapiriformic compartment. So that shows the pathway of um, pudendal vessels in the infrapiriformic compartment. So the infrapiriformic, um, we have suprapiriformic compartment and infrapiriformic um, compartment. So for example, if you to look at this, this is your piriformis muscle and the structures passing above, that's this uh, suprapiriformic and these are infrapiriformic. So suprapiriformic compartment, you have superior gluteal nerve, superior gluteal artery and superior gluteal vein. Those are the contents of the suprapiriformic compartment. While the infrapiriformic compartment below the piriformis uh, muscle, you have majorly the sciatic nerve, posterior cutaneous nerve of thigh, then inferior gluteal nerve and inferior gluteal vessels. Um, furthermore, we also have two structures in the intrapiriformic compartment. That's the pudendal nerve and internal pudendal vessels. They pass through the intrapiriformic compartment, then back through the intrapiriformic compartment to enter the, the pelvis. Okay, so they curve forwards to enter the perineum through the lesser sciatic foramen. So we've said the greater sciatic foramen is divided into suprapiriformic and infrapiriformic by piriformic muscle. Suprapiriformic compartment has superior gluteal nerve and vessels. Infrapiriformic compartment has inferior gluteal nerve and vessels, sciatic nerve, and lateral cutaneous nerve of thigh. Pedendal vessels and pedendal nerve will traverse from infrapiriformic compartment into perineum through the lesser sciatic foramen. So we go to posterior compartment of the thigh. So this is the posterior compartment. And we have biceps femoris, semitendinosus and semimembranosus. And these are the hamstring muscles. Okay, so biceps femoris has two heads. Then we have semitendinosus, the one that's more tendinous, and semimembranosus. And they are supplied by perforating branches of profunda femoris. Then um, the innervation is by sciatic nerve. So these are the muscles. That's the semitendinosus. So remember, this is the medial aspect. This is lateral aspect. So this tendinous one is semitendinosus, and this is your biceps. All of them come from the ischial tuberosity. And after you remove semitendinosus deep to it, you appreciate semimembranosus. It's more fleshy than semitendinosus. That's the long head of biceps. When you remove the long head, you can see the short head of biceps. So all these three, um, semitendinosus, semimembranosus, and long head of biceps come from ischial tuberosity. So they have a common origin. And then short head of biceps does not come from the ischial tuberosity. It's usually somewhere on the linear aspect of the femur. So you can be asked to write an essay on the sciatic nerve. So the origin is from the sacral plexus. Remember, the root value is L4, L5, S1, S2, S3 from the sacral plexus. Then it will leave the pelvis from infrapiriformic compartment, enters the gluteal region, then runs um, inferior and lateral to the gluteus, maxim deep to the gluteus maximus. Then in between ischial tuberosity and greater trochanter, Okay, midway, that's the landmark. So if you um, draw from ischial tuberosity to greater trochanter, the midpoint, that's where it crosses, okay, into the back of the thigh, then you find it lying deep to the long head of biceps femoris. So you have to remove biceps femoris long head for you to see the sciatic nerve. And then at the superior border of the popliteal fossa, it divides into tibial nerve and common peroneal that goes laterally. So this is your common peroneal nerve, this is tibial nerve. So sciatic nerve innervates the hamstring muscles. So tibial branch innervates semitendinosus, semimembranosus, and long head of biceps, while 
the short head of biceps is innervated by common peroneal nerve. Remember, sciatic nerve will also innervate the hip and the knee joints, the joints it crosses, okay? And they, so remember, heel tones low. These muscles are causing movements at the hip joint and knee joint. Therefore, since they're innervated by sciatic nerve, it means the nerve innervates the, the joints. So these are the clinical significance of the piriformis. So sciatic nerve can pass below the piriformis in the infrapiriformic compartment, then goes to divide at the uh, upper border of popliteal fossa. It can also divide in the pelvis, then the tibial nerve pierces piriformis and common peroneal passes infrapiriformically. Or it can divide in the pelvis and tibial nerve passes in the suprapiriformic compartment while common peroneal passes in the infrapiriformic compartment. So in this case, when piriformis muscle contracts, it will cause compression of sciatic nerve and that's what you call piriformis syndrome. Then another applied anatomy of the sciatic nerve, where is it safe to give intramuscular gluteal injections? So you divide the gluteal region into four quadrants, four equal quadrants. So the superolateral quadrant is usually the safest to give injections because you tend to avoid the um, important nerves at that region. Remember, the landmark for sciatic nerve is midpoint between ischiotuberosity and greater trochanter. Then Sciatic nerve is also um, damaged in posterior hip dislocation. Thank you.